Hey gang, um, there was really too much information in the part 8 video to put into one video, so I'm going to separate it and just let you know there's, this is part 9, and there will be a variety of things that I'll point out in this video, but um, it was just getting too long for the part 8 video. So, um, for those of you that have followed along, this is Brooklyn Pony. And I've done a bunch of work to this thing. Obviously, I've um, started with a rusted out 66 Mustang convertible. And I've built up this body so far using a Dynacorn one-piece floor pan. I added on the rockers, the B-pillars, the inner structure. And put in the uh, original back seat area, the rain gutter. And in the previous video, I put these quarter panels on. And again, there's just too much information, so I'm going to split this up into two videos so that uh, it's not an, an hour and a half long by the time I'm done with it. Well, I think I have all the details covered that I want to share in this portion of the video. At this point, um, everything's painted, like I said. Everywhere there's a weld, it's been painted, seam sealed. And so I think it's time to start hanging the quarter panels. Make some progress on that. I should point out here a little bit, this inner portion here that goes to where the rear quarter windows open up, obviously it's going to slide over the top of that, but as I do this, this portion here, which meets with the deck filler, I have to come underneath that. So it's kind of a twisting motion or a rotating motion coming in from the front, I'm sorry, coming in like that. Hope that makes sense. It may not. So I'll drop the front over, bring the backside across and up, made it to the wheelhouse. Alright, so with those in place, I've got a nice even gap at the bottom. It's real nice and tight on the wheelhouse. I know it's hard to get the camera around in there, but it's real nice. Sorry, I don't know where I'm aiming. There it is. The bottom edge is flush with the uh, drop-off panel from the inside. The seam up here where it meets the deck filler, nice and even. And there you can see where I'll clamp that before I weld it, obviously. And I'm going to show you something a little, little bit, but um, I talked about these corners having issues because they don't make them fit right. Well, this one, I reshaped it, and so it'll line up evenly with the original uh, overlap here. And I talked about this one being a problem and it's still a problem but what I'll do and I'll, sh I'll show you how I do this I'll unroll this flange of metal 
and reshape this and then bend that back so that it matches the shape as it should. I've also got the clamp on the inside here where the two flanges meet. Same as on the other side. There you go. And again, the fitment is the same on the driver's side. Nice and even. So I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to point out some things. Whenever I do these, of course, I'm going to put the tail panel on before, or clamp it in place before I do anything else. But when I do these and I weld them together, I'm not going to weld the whole thing right now. And what, I'm, what I mean by that is I'm not going to weld the front edge of this, the uh, quarter panel. Because when the fitment of the door comes into play, I don't want to have this in a fixed location and then I can't move, the, move it to match the door or if I need to just give it a little bit of a nudge one way or the other because you can you can move this around a little bit and change you know the alignment so I'm not going to weld that yet um, and I may not weld all of these up here on top just yet but I can weld this location more than likely I can weld all of the wheel arch opening um, because I really can't change that where that sits against the uh, wheelhouse I'm not going to be able to move um, same way with the bottom I can probably just weld that and that'll be fine but again I'm going to put the uh, tail panel in place before I do any welding and also set the deck lid back on and make sure everything lines up so stay tuned before I do install or locate the tail panel uh, I think I pointed out before some of my drill patterns and basically you can see here I'm just putting three holes up at the top and then I'm going to put one just below this mount hole one going up and then I'll do it basically it'll be three all together here on this edge but you can also see the pattern hopefully you can see it that I laid out and there's nothing specific about the pattern except for you don't want to have a weld where the um, balance panel will bolt on or as it is attached by screws. So if you see these long hash marks, I went ahead and checked the um, location of the holes on the balance panel and I can show you that. And basically I just lined up the cutouts and then put hash marks at each one of those locations. It just makes it easier whenever you're laying stuff out to be a little proactive and that way you're not having to deal with drilling either a weld to put your screw in and so that's just how I do it, just an observation. I want to point out another detail that probably most people wouldn't even think about um, but in this case I wanted to show you something the holes for the valance panel are already here in this Dynacorn pan and I've already checked the valance panel and they, it lines up right right on the money where it should be with each one of these holes now when you put the tail panel on you're going to cover these holes it's going to be hard to locate them and you know you can try to set the balance panel in place but you may never hit the exact holes now granted these holes are maybe just a little bit different across uh, the the panel or the, the overhang here but what I do is I measure from the bottom edge in this case it's 20 30 seconds this one's 12 12 14 and so on because there can be some variance there Here's 16 and I've written the numbers down not only here, I don't know if you can see that okay, um, but also on the underside of the panel here. And what that'll do for me is whenever I set the tail panel on, 
now I have a reference point that I can come back to. I've got a center line on the hole. I've got a distance from the bottom edge to the top. So once the, the tail panel is in place and fully welded in, I can come back and remeasure that, drill a pilot hole and be comfortable with where I'm at and step it up a little bit if I need to or just use the screw uh, to go on through that. So just an observation, something I wanted to point out. And again, I'm going to show you something else when I get to this point with the tail panel with this difference in the gap here at the quarter. Um, it, it'll be a relatively simple fix and I've shown this on other videos but I'll show you what I do here when I get to that point. Before I fully set the panel in place where I want it, I'm going to locate it and then mark all of the weld through holes so that I can grind the metal and bear it and then spray with uh, zinc weld through primer. Now again, I'm just preparing this for when I'm going to weld that on. I'm not ready to weld the tail panel on yet because I still have to do some adjustments on the back of the quarter panels. Now that I have the tail panel set in what I believe to be the right location, I will set the deck lid on and since it still has the original gasket on it, that's going to help line it up on these flanges and align it a little more. Now again, I, as I've I showed in the previous some previous videos, I will mock up or test fit the uh, quarter panel extensions and make sure they line up properly with the deck lid. Um, they, may, they may need some adjustment, but at least I can tell if the deck lid is fore and aft like it should be. Um, it lines up very well. I already know that on the tail panel, the gap is even all the way across, and so. At this point, I can probably start welding. I thought I should show you this before I put the tail panel back in place. I noted earlier about the problem with the fitment here where the quarter panel meets the back of the tail panel flange or whatever you want to call this part. And basically I drilled through the spot welds, not through the, this piece of metal, just through the spot welds. So it looked like this, it had this gap. And when I drilled through those welds, this piece pulled itself forward almost exactly where it needs to be. Now, the way to fix this, in my opinion, is to reshape this little flange right here so that it comes up further and does away with this uh, corner out here. So I'm gonna to try to show you that. I'm gonna use this uh, they call them body spoons or there's different terms for them but basically it came in a, a kit that I had and what I want to do is come in in the corner where I want it to curve up so I'm going to set this in place and just tap and work this part flat heavier bar to help shape that. I've got one of these. It's there okay. So 
basically I'm not changing anything um, as far as structure. I'm just changing the shape slightly. And you can see maybe a little bit the corner is moved up. So now all I'll do is clamp that back together and weld those uh, old spot weld shut and that's going to set this right in place where it needs to be and then the tail panel will fit on top and that'll take care of that. And I'll do the same thing on the passenger, or on the, uh, passenger side as well. Hope that helps. And just for reference, there's the passenger side, nice and straight. Now I did have to cut off. Well, let me see if I can get some better light on here. I did have to cut off a little bit of material on this uh, top side here because this uh, lower section was longer than it was on the driver's side. So I trimmed off, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so, and did the same thing with the hammer and dolly. And now I'll just re-weld that back together and the tail panels or the tail panel should fit very nicely now. Okay, so one more thing I wanted to show you as I make progress on the back half of the car. I talked before about how the quarter panel doesn't match the filler panel. You can see it's just short, um, obviously not going to work. 
and I talked about how there's a flange down here that's rolled too far down. So what I my intention is to roll this back out, kind of reshape it, and then make it match. So it takes a little bit of effort. Let's see if I can't uh, undo some of this. There you can see just how much, hopefully you can see, just how much material is sticking down below. And I'm not too worried about back here. I don't want to change this shape so much. I need to just bring it back up the hill though, let's say. And because it's in a curve, it's going to be more challenging because the metal is already bent into that curve shape. But it has to be undone. Before I can do anything with it. Now, I'm going to kind of have to, in a way, guesstimate where I want this to end up because it's kind of hard to lay a plane on here and get that angle the way I want it. Let me run roll this a little bit more. And this is definitely the time to do it. You don't want to do it when you're getting ready to put my paint on something. I have a rough kind of idea. Now I'm going to want to fold that back over. Use the edge of my block to create the angle that I want.
you kind of get the idea with what I'm doing there. I'm going to have to reform it just a little bit down on this side. It's kind of hard with the camera in front of me. But anyway, that's the idea is I'm going to unfold, unfold with that material, reshape it up to match this. And then I'm going to play with this again back here, like I said, to get the, get the plane. Um, kind of hard to show exactly the same, you know, as it, as it should be. But. Well, I didn't like the way that was going. The problem I had was by moving the, uh, unfolding it and moving the material taller let's say I was left with an exposed edge here and a seam or what looks like a seam it's actually the original fold and I didn't like the way that was going to look so I like to just cut off this side of the uh, the flange or cut off the, the flange or the fold and I'll just make a new one and what I'll do is weld that in blend it and I can trim the bottom of it to where it'll blend in nice and it'd be really hard to tell that that was ever worked on but sometimes you have to do different things you know on the other side on the passenger side there was enough material there that it would hide that edge and so I was good with that but over here it was so sh so out of shape that it wouldn't have mattered what I did it would have left this exposed and had this little tiny edge up here on top so that's my plan I'm gonna weld that in and then blend it down And there's the end result. Pretty happy with that. Looks a lot cleaner. Blends in really nice. It gives it more of a finished look. So with that, really the last thing I have to do is install the actual weld on the tail panel. And that'll take care of the back half of the car. Um, the other quarter is welded on and in place. So. I guess I'll work on that tail panel. Alright, so these are the corner filler pieces. And as you can see, they're unpainted. There are, I've seen different variations of these. Um, these are basically Spectra Premium. That's, this is for the left side. And that's for the right side. And you can see it's got Mustang Unlimited part numbers on those. But um, they also, I've used ones in the past that do have the EPD or EDP coating on it, the black ones, and they fit well. Uh, these fit fine too. I haven't really had much of an issue with these except for they trim them a, a little bit long in places. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, first off, I want to point out that these things are cut out with a plasma cutter. So you end up with a little bit of an edge on it. So you want to blend that off. And that's what I already did on the driver side and then if you will see this black line up here that has to be cut off because um, when I fit this in it's too tall and that that extra length actually hits the inside uh, corner of the quarter if you can see that or not you can be able to tell but basically it's just too tall so it'll hit. So I'm going to cut that off. And then this line here, and I'm going to uh, also a line on top, sorry, line on top here, is where it's going to go underneath of this folded area. And so to help that along, first of all, what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut off this excess to make sure it fits just fine. And then if needed, I'll cut that off because it's, it's a big piece and uh, it's really not going to help much to have that much material, but I'll look at it once I get this other piece um, cut off. And as you can see, I laid out a, a drill pattern so that when this is in place, all those will get welds and meet the uh, flanges on this uh, corner piece. All right, well, I wanted to show you some details in doing this, these corner braces. As, I, as I've shown in the previous segment, um, 
these were, this driver's side in particular was a lot taller, so I had cut off that top edge. And I also had some lines drawn here to where I was going to cut this off. If you look at it compared to the passenger side, you can see the difference in how much I cut off. And the reason for that is I wanted this edge tucked under this corner on the inside of the trunk opening. And um, I didn't want it, it, was, it would stick out in, into the trunk opening. So this is trimmed back to match with that. Along with that, I also flattened out this corner. You can see it gets fat, hopefully, and I, I flattened it out. The reason for that is this flange right here, and I'll show you in a second, when it compresses down, it would never fold over the big fat part as seen on this, this part on the passenger side. So I took it to my welding table and just took a hammer and just kind of flattened that out. And I also trimmed this down a little bit because it was a bit longer. So with that, I'll show you what I was mentioning here with this overlap. You can see it's all flat. When it gets back here, it has to just kind of roll over that a little bit. Um, other than that, you can see my drill pattern that I've laid out to weld this in. And I've also back sprayed everything with weld through primer. Hopefully you can see that. And then uh, beyond that, I'm prepping to put in this trunk brace. And I'll show you that. There's trunk support. This holds the latch and it also supports the tail panel. Now the convertible is different than the um, coupe. If you look at the shape here, this, the convertible has a heavy box back here and the coupe, it's got a thinner uh, tapered piece and it's not even a real box. You can see it's got a, a lip here and then it tapers forward so it's completely different and it's not, there's not much here underneath, it's just you know one piece whereas I think the convertible piece is, is a bit different. It has that kickback, but it also has that, that inner box shape. So the difference is the uh, support brace is about an inch to an inch and a half or so shorter on the end down here between a coupe and a convertible. So that said, uh, I'm getting ready to put this in. So maybe you can see here, you can see the dimples where there were spot welds, two on each side. and. What I've done is I've traced out the pattern of the, uh, um, sorry, looking at the camera upside down, traced out the pattern here and then drilled some holes and then um, that'll set me up for welding it back in. I've also drilled holes up here on top. And the other thing I want to point out is whenever I'm doing these sort of things, um, this corner that was created by the tail panel in the box, well, when the brace is in place, it kind of creates an area where you can't put in seam sealer very easily. So what I what I like to do, and as you can see here, I've I put some paint. Actually, I use some Krylon paint and primer together, and I just kind of poured it in there. I just wanted it to get in deep and run into that that crevice or crack, and try to soak in. And once that dries, I will put seam sealer behind that, or in that corner, at least behind the brace. I may not do all of it right now, but I want to get that section behind the support brace so that I'm not fighting with it later, because you know it's kind of hard to get back in there. So that's your opportunity to take care of that. And then the rest of it I can do later on as I move along. Um, let's see, one other thing I noticed on this side over here, it's got a, a little lip hanging down, which will have to be cut off because that will interfere with the fitment of this corner brace on this side. Um, of course, the balance panel where all these welds are, uh, those all need to be ground down and prepped because the balance panel has to fit flush. So make sure you blend those down. And another thing I'll point out is when it comes to fitting the balance panel, this will get in your way. This flange right here so you have to do some cutting. Basically, you know, make a straight line down and get rid of this curve. 
because it, it'll fight with the valance panel fitting on. I've run into that before, and I've, I've shown that in other videos. And I guess it's just the way they make these things, but that's how it is. So at this point, uh, I'm going to weld in this corner brace, do a little more prep, and get this valance uh, or tail panel brace in place. Well, that's the end for this segment. Um, I don't know if this is part eight or part nine. I have a lot of video to edit, or I have, you know, when, by the time you see this, I will have edited a lot of video to make uh, probably probably two videos. Um, but anyway, uh, the as you can see, that that corner piece is in. That's taken care of. I've also taken care of the seam sealer down there and welded in that support brace. And other than taking care of the bumper braces, which I'm not going to weld in yet, uh, I don't want to make anything permanent until I actually have the bumpers. Because if I need to fine tune those and I have them welded in, that doesn't help me. So those will come at a later date. Uh, again, I still have some trimming to do down here, as I pointed out. And, of course, a lot of blending of welds and uh, getting it ready for the next step. So again, this is the end of this segment and the next, uh, probably the next series I'll be working on the front end of the car. So we'll see how that turns out and uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.